Hi, I'm the Grow Boss. I write the Grow Book and Equipment Guide, and you might remember me from some of my other videos, like how to piss off all the nutrient vendors by telling you the truth about nutrients, or how to piss off all the lighting vendors by telling you the truth about lighting, or my personal favorite, how to piss off a bunch of growers by telling them the truth about growing and doing it with an attitude. Yeah, that was a good series. Remember all those videos? Anyway, this is going to be a really long video for an RO machine. And I don't know what to say about that, but I can tell you this, no one will ever have to make an RO video again because this video will include everything you need to know about RO machines for growing cannabis, and then some. So let me introduce you to my ultimate RO machines. And I build them to be the best on the market for the least amount of money because I looked at all the other RO machines trying to sell their shit to growers and they're either too expensive because they're built by science companies trying to make their product fit the marijuana market or they include features you will never use but drive up the price. So keep watching because I'm going to show you everything you need to know about how these things work and why you should buy my Ultimate RO for less money instead of all those other brands. Okay, first, I am going to define the parameters of this video. Then, I'm gonna educate you about how RO machines work. Then, we're gonna follow that with some tips and tricks about installing them. We're gonna go over wastewater and how to adjust the Ultimate RO for maximum efficiency. And we are going to go over all of the RO options you can choose from on the growboss.com Ultimate RO site. Finally, we're gonna do some Ultimate RO maintenance and troubleshooting because there are a few questions you guys always seem to have, so we might as well get it out of the way here in this video and save us both the time and the call. So let's start off by defining your terms and parameters for this video. For instance, everybody wants the best everything. But what does that mean? Does the best mean you want to spend as much money as possible? Because that would be awesome. Or does the best mean you want to purchase every feature possible, whether you need it or not? Like a membrane flush kit for $39 so you can get under your sink and dick around with all these connections. So you can flush the membrane and then rehook up everything back up so you can save what? 20 bucks on a new membrane? Even though you're still gonna have to replace it anyway because they're disposable? Or does the best mean the most water possible? Even if the machine wastes water at a rate of like three to one, like the competition does, like I showed you in my ultimate RO wastewater challenge video. So what defines the best? Now, if you ask me what I think is best and what we are going to use as a guideline for this video, then we'll be using what I think is important. So best for growers is defined as the best compromise between the cost of the system, that's the initial buying expense, and of course, the cost of the wastewater necessary to produce the clean water needed over time. So let's go over what everything is and what everything does first, and then we'll start comparing features because we can't do that until we educate ourselves so we can understand what it is we're truly comparing. Okay, this is a filter and this is a reverse osmosis machine. Notice they both have the same two filters at the bottom and the water comes in through the supply line and the first filter removes the sediment and the second filter removes the chlorine, yes, but that's it for this filter. It can't do any more. And with the filter like this, the clean water that comes out on this side will have the same pressure or more as the supply line coming in because these filters don't restrict water flow like a membrane does. Now, this machine is an RO, specifically because it has the reverse osmosis membrane on top. The actual membrane is in the housing, and it looks like this. 
and I'll show you how to change it later. But for now, what you need to know is that this membrane is what works the magic. It's what separates the PPM, the salt, from the water so you get low salt or low PPM clean water out the blue tube, the clean water tube, and the high salt or PPM wastewater out of this tube, the black tube. Now, this filter is like a Brita filter. It takes the sediment, smell, and taste out of the water, but not the salt or the PPM. And this type of basic filter is what goes in a refrigerator or anything that dispenses water. And where our own machines separate the salt from the water by pressurizing this membrane housing and then collecting the water that's been squeezed through it from the port here, a lot of you also ask about distilled water. And distilled produces the same quality of low PPM water, but it does it in a different way. Turns out distilled water is actually water vapor condensed back into a liquid and they do it just like they do alcohol. They heat the water until it boils off and then they catch and cool and condense that vapor back into water just like it condenses out of the air on the outside of a cold cup on a hot day. The thing is though, steam or water in vapor form cannot carry salt molecules because the molecules are too far apart. So just like how the RO separates the salt from the water with pressure and this membrane, the distillation process does it with heat and water vapor. But the end result is just about the same. It separates the salt from the water and the only real difference is that the RO machines only filter the water down to the micron level and we're microbial life can survive the RO process, they cannot survive the distillation process. So if you have E. coli butt juice in your water, get distilled water because RO machines cannot filter that shit out. Get it? And bubbling air into your res does nothing for the salt or the chlorine. First, plants need chlorine to maintain skeletal turgor. So there's no need for you to even worry about it. And second, if you can drink the water, your plants can drink the water. And for removing the PPMs from the water, you have to ask, how could bubbling air into water possibly remove the PPMs if they had to invent the RO machine and the distillation process to accomplish that? They would have drained the ocean years ago. Anyway, this is the pressure block that receives the signal from the float and this is the throttle that controls the wastewater and we'll get more into that and those features later in the video but for now let's talk a little bit about the install because no matter which RO machine you buy they all install the same and the questions are always the same okay when you go to set up your ultimate RO there are three tubes you need to deal with the first is this supply line this is the line that supplies water into the machine. It's white, and we attach this hose adapter to it before it ships. Yours, of course, will have a three foot long tube. I keep this short because in the video, I'm trying to keep it all in the frame. But for your RO, I attach the hose adapter to the supply line for you, so you know for sure which is the line in. And it will attach directly to a 5 8 garden hose or any hose bin, no confusion there. But if you are going to hook it to a sink or a faucet in your house, you are going to need a sink to hose adapter from the hardware store. So just take your faucet adapter with you when you go and they'll match it to an adapter for you. Now, the wastewater tube is simple. It's this black tube and it's probably just gonna go down the drain in your sink or in your shower or in the back of your toilet tank. And this water is fine for outside plants in the ground, and you could drink this water and be just fine. It just has a little more salt in it. Which leaves us with the blue tube, the clean water tube. And this goes to your res. Could be a trash can in the bathroom, or a reservoir under a flood table in another room. Or multiple reservoirs, doesn't matter. And I'll show you how to set up a float in a minute, but for now, Let's take a look at some of the sizes the Ultimate RO comes in. 
Now, there are a few options when it comes to ROs. And when you go to my website, thegrowboss.com, and click the ultimate RO link, the first choice you're going to have to make is how much water your garden is going to need. And the single housing RO machines can either be set up to produce 100 or 150 gallons per day, depending on which membrane we put in. And both the 100 and the 150 gallon per day machines will easily make enough water for four lights, whether you're in media or hydro. Then, if you need more water because you're in a bigger system, just order the 200 or the 300 gallon per day machine, depending on how much more water you need. For instance, the 100 GPD is good for up to four lights. So the 200 GPD will easily do six lights. Now this is the 200 because we put two 100s in there. But for only a few bucks more, you could get the 300 gallon per day machine. So if you're gonna do eight lights or more, or you're ever going to need the extra water, just spend the extra money now and get yourself the 300 GPD machine. Because the last thing you wanna do is have to go back and buy two 150 gallon per day replacement membranes later especially after I just told you how to save some money. And no, a three membrane 450 gallon per day machine doesn't work. I tried it. I called it the well water RO and no, it did not work. And we had to retire it. But yes, it seemed like a great idea and I tried it. But no, it was a disaster. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about the two different ways you can configure an RO later in the video because not every manage, manufacturer hooks them up like I do. And it's super important that you both understand the difference between the configurations and that you know how yours is configured too. And now, once you've decided on which RO you want, the 100 or 150, the 200 or 300. The next option is the post RO mineralizer. And in some cases, this will slightly reduce water flow, but in all cases, it will add PPM to the water. And I'll explain more about that later in the video. But for now, you should know this. This is the filter that takes out the rocks and sediment. This is the filter that takes out the smell and chlorine. And this is the filter that separates out the salts. And they always go in that order. Because if you put the smallest filter first, the membrane, it would immediately clog with particles that would have otherwise been trapped by the filters before it. So, always pay attention to the, pay attention to the order. And remember that the most porous filter goes first. Anyway, if you tested the water with your Grow Boss Megameter here before the mineralizer, it would be about 30 ppm. After the mineralizer though, and because the mineralizer adds calcium and magnesium back into the water, if you tested the water with your Megameter here, it could be as high as 135 ppm. But it usually settles out at around 85 ppm after the first 100 or gallons or so. Now, these things have calcite and magnesium in them. And as the water passes through them, it's constantly releasing those ions into the stream. So these things, the post-RO mineralizers, need to be replaced more frequently. And where the membrane only needs to be replaced yearly, the mineralizer needs to be replaced about every six months. And I suggest you double up on the post-RO mineralizers when you order your Ultimate RO because they only last six months. And for the small grower with the 100 or the 150 RO, this is way less expensive and way less of a hassle to do than adding a CalMag product to every watering. But then when you're producing big water, like with the 200 and the 300 gallon per day filters, you probably won't use a post-RO mineralizer because it's not really meant for that amount of water. And depending on which Ultimate RO you buy, this could last as short as two months with the 300 gallon per day machine, four months with the 200 gallon per day, and as long as six months with the 100 gallon per day machine. 
And that's why I say when you, when you make the jump to 200 gallons per day or more, it's probably easier and maybe even a little cheaper to deal with it by adding a CalMag supplement directly to the reservoir. And then there is the float. Possibly the only thing more scary than failure. So let's look at what it does and how it works and then I bet you won't be so scared to buy it and use it because for $29 more, when used correctly, a float will prevent you from flooding your house because hours later, when you suddenly remember you forgot to shut the RO off and that water is just pouring everywhere at a rate of at least a gallon every 15 minutes and because the law of averages states that you probably won't be home when you remember you forgot to shut it off it's going to be a disaster that costs you a lot more than the $29 you tried to save by not using a float and I also sell 25 feet of extension tubing with this coupler attached so you can add this to the blue clean water and your RO can now reach all the way from your bathroom to your reservoir in the grow room and because I don't actually know which side you need to hook the extension to because you may need it for the supply side or you may need it for the wastewater side or you may need it for the clean water side I just put this in the box with your RO then all you have to do is connect this coupler with whichever line you want to make it longer and I'll show you how to take the tubes on and off later in the video in the troubleshooting section but for now since most of you are going to hook the supply to a sink or a hose and run the waste down the closest drain most of you will only use the extension tubing for the clean water that goes to the float in the res and for that all you have to do is drill a small 7 16 hole in the res up high like this and screw in the float then just hook the other end to the other end of the 25 feet of extension tubing and you're good and if you need to cut or trim the tubing to fit I'll show you how to do that later in the video because there are some concerns you need to know about too but for now just make sure you double check that all the tubes are pushed in tightly and securely and that after you turn the water on for the first time you need to carefully inspect and watch to make sure there are no leaks because a leak on the high pressure side or or through the float will flood everything you own in 20 minutes so pay attention now the float itself works like this the clean water flows from the ultimate RO into the pressure block and then out to your reservoir where the float is then when the water in your res gets high enough to lift the float it shuts off the water flow here inside the mechanics of it then as the plants use that water and the level of the water in your res drops and the float drops it drops until this port opens again and water flows in and water will continue to flow in until the float lifts again and shuts off the flow in here again that's the cycle of a float up water off down water in up off down in up down up down boring right but the float is fully adjustable and that's exciting just loosen the wing nut here and hold and support both sides of it like this and it takes a little bit of pressure to break it loose the first time so pay attention and there it is adjust it to where you need it and tighten it down making sure that the part where the water comes out is face down and remember earlier when I told you the pressure block up here on the RO is controlled by the float well here's how the pressure block does its job inside this block is a diaphragm where a little pressure on the top side is magnified into a lot of pressure on the bottom side and what happens is when the float in the res rises and shuts off the water flow that sends a little pressure wave back to this sort of like a stop impulse but that stop impulse is not strong enough to overcome the pressure on the bottom in the supply line that comes from your hose or faucet and ROs without this pressure block would continue to flow wastewater even when your float sent the stop signal 
and the clean water is no longer flowing. That's why we use these pressure blocks now, to save you all that money in wasted wastewater. Now, on the top, or the short side, the clean water flows from the RO to the res and to the float, and the bottom side, the amplification side, connects to the high pressure supply line coming out of the carbon filter. So when the float rises and the flow of clean water stops, that impulse is magnified here in the pressure block. And that interrupts and shuts off the supply here before the water even gets to the membrane, thereby guaranteeing you're not paying for nor creating any wastewater when you're not creating clean water. And when used properly, this pressure block and this float together will help prevent floods and keep your reservoir neatly topped off. Gotta love the pressure block. And if you decide to upgrade your RO with my float valve upgrade kit, I'll show you later in the video how to add a float and a pressure block to any RO. But while we're here, let's take a look at the throttle valve on the wastewater line now. Okay, whether or not your RO is one of those super expensive, super low flow, eight gallon per day hardware store ROs that comes with a storage tank and is meant to go under your kitchen sink, or you have my competition's super high end RO machine designed for use in science labs. But either way, they all use these fixed restrictors on the wastewater side because it's way cheaper than using a throttle valve like this. And from the manufacturer's perspective, what the fuck do they care about the cost of your wastewater? They just need those clean water production numbers so they don't get sued for false advertising. But that's also why my Ultimate RO comes with this throttle valve instead of this silly inline restrictor. And I do that because I have no idea what your water pressure is. And probably neither do you. So we have no way to pre-calculate what your wastewater will be. So, if you use one of those fixed, low-flow, showerhead type wastewater reducer things that come with every other RO on the market, you're going to end up with the same 2 to 1 and more than likely something closer to a 3 to 1 wastewater ratio like I showed you in the Great Waste Water Challenge video. Because you have no way to adjust your waste to match your clean water or your water pressure. But with my Ultimate RO and this throttle valve, now you can precisely control and visually verify that the clean to waste water ratio is one to one before final assembly, no matter what pressure you have at the faucet. Let me show you what I mean. So you already know the Ultimate RO comes fully assembled. The membrane is already installed in the housing and we are already attached the hose adapter to the supply side, so you know which one it is. Well, we also installed one of these throttle valves on the wastewater line, and when it ships, we already pre-adjusted it to about the two o'clock position. And that's usually good enough to keep the flow of the wastewater somewhere close to the flow of the clean water, so much that it won't just come rocketing out of here when you first fill it with water. But do check that this is set to about 2 o'clock, because sometimes it moves during shipping. And once wastewater starts to flow, you'll hold the wastewater line and the clean water line next to each other like this. So you can compare the flow rate from both tubes while they're next to each other. And usually the wastewater will be flowing faster than the clean. And that's okay, because you're going to dial back the wastewater with this throttle valve until the clean water and the wastewater are flowing at about the same rates. And it doesn't matter if you're adjusting this for a 100 or a 300 gallon per day machine. Adjusting the waste to clean water ratio is always the same. Just remember, when you make any adjustments to the throttle valve, it takes 30 seconds for the change in pressure to balance itself out inside the RO. So once you get close to that one-to-one -one ratio, wait and watch for just 30 seconds longer to make sure the flow doesn't change again. Also, you can turn down the Ultimate RO to a one-to-one -one waste water, but 
Remember how I said back at the beginning that we wanted the best RO and that we determined that the best was a combination of cost and clean versus wastewater production? Well, my RO is literally the only one that comes with this wastewater throttle valve. And I'm showing you this because right now the throttle valve is set to one to one. But you can make more clean water if you increase the wastewater ratio to a two to one or three to one ratio because membranes only operate at their stated filtration rate at those higher waste numbers. And what that means is this, when the wastewater is turned down to one to one, the 100 gallon per day membrane will only produce about 90 gallons instead of the stated 100. And the 150 gallon membrane will only produce about 135 gallons. But that only slows the rate of water production and in no way does it shorten the life of the membrane. Membrane life is based on total water filtered and how much salt, how much stuff was in the water it filtered. So there is some flexibility here, but trust me, you're going to want to set the throttle valve to one to one. And if you think you need more water, just upgrade to the next size membrane because over time, faster membranes like the 150 cost less than wasting more water when using 100. Okay, remember how I told you earlier that there were different ways to configure in an RO and that the different ways were not equal and that you need to know which you wanted and how your RO is set up because if you buy the wrong configuration or set it up wrong yourself, you'll never get the results you want. Well, on the single membrane RO, this doesn't matter, but it does on the doubles like this. And here's why. When you have two membranes, that means they can either be set up in series or in parallel, right? You can either set them up so that they filter the same water twice, where the second comes after the first in a double filter fashion, or you can supply each with their own water and then catch and combine the waste and clean water each produces after it's been filtered. So yes, you are filtering the same volume of water, but it's only being filtered once in parallel, so the filters are dividing the workload, instead of in series. And both produce about the same amount of waste, but doing it like this in parallel instead of in series, gets you way more clean water for the same wastewater. And there are three more membrane limitations you need to know. The first you already know, that clean water flow is partially based on wastewater flow. The more waste, the more clean water, to a point. But the next thing you need to know about membranes is that they can only remove up to about 500 ppms in the past. So if your water is 650 ppms or higher, which is unlikely, you may want to consider running your membranes one after the other like this in series. That's why I told you, you need to know which you want and how yours is set up. Because if you buy in series like this, when you want in parallel like this, your machine is never going to work the way you want it to, which is actually what I did when I built my well water RO. I did the first two membranes in parallel. Then I combined the output of both of those and pushed that through a second membrane. Yeah, it didn't work and we stopped selling the well water RO because we got too many returns. It's a builder thing, yeah? You know, I figured more was better because some was good. And it seemed like a good idea, yeah. But no. And we retired the product and stopped advertising it pretty quick. Like, after we sold about maybe 10. One more thing if you're running your membranes in series. You have to replace the first one every six months and the second one once a year. Again, because the first one in the series is doing most of the work. Another reason why you always want your RO in parallel and not in series. The third thing you need to know is that two membranes in series like this wastes the most water possible. And not just because the water is being filtered twice, it's because you're making way less clean water for the same wastewater. That's why 
if you double the clean water for the same wastewater, then suddenly a three to one machine becomes a three and two machine and a two to one machine becomes a one to one machine. Just like my ultimate RO. The only RO on the market that comes pre-assembled to your specifications, specifications, configured in parallel for twice the clean water with half the waste and has this wastewater control throttle valve. Which brings us to the second thing you need to know about configuring two membranes. How to actually set them up in parallel where the filtering is being divided equally among the membranes. And this is super important because after selling lots and lots of RO machines, I've learned that like 0% of you need your RO set up in series. Pretty much all of you need it set up in parallel because the PPMs in the water in every city in the United States are low enough that filtering at once is more than enough to clean it to where you need it. So if you have a dual membrane system, make sure it's set up properly and in parallel by following the supply tubing from the filter to the membrane. And it doesn't matter what color your tubing is. The water comes in here. The sediment gets removed first, then the chlorine, and then here, where the water leaves the char where the charcoal chlorine filter, check to see if this tube, this tube splits off into two branches and goes to each membrane individually. And pay attention, because the housings can be like this, or they can be rotated 180. And if it does split into both caps, then your RO is set up in parallel. But if it has just one tube that goes into just one cap, and then the clean water from the first housing supplies the membrane in the second housing, you should immediately log on to thegrowboss.com and just buy yourself one of my ultimate ROs today and save yourself all the money, time, and wastewater. Shit, you'll probably get even more flow than you're getting now just by switching to my ultimate RO. Also, while you're inspecting your RO, check to make sure that it's splitting the tubes with Y branches like these, like I use for my ultimate RO, and not T branches like this because, because that's one of the things that I noticed the other manufacturers do. Which is why I always tell you to know your competition because soon as I looked for ways to improve upon the machines currently on the market, I noticed that almost every other manufacturer uses t cheaper T junctions like these instead of the more expensive Y branches. And I tell you that because I want you to imagine the flow of water into this thing. Whether that be coming in from here and splitting into two streams here and here, or two streams combining head on into one stream and coming out here. Either way, there's going to be a lot of turbulence at that junction. And that's going to slow water flow way down. Now, compare that to the Y branches I use. And because, them I, and because I use them on the high pressure side in this direction, from one tube split into two, there are no restrictions on the pressure supplied to the membranes. And yes, I also use Ys to collect and combine the waste and clean water output too. But this is the low pressure side and combining them two into one on the low pressure side does not pose the same problem as combining two tubes on the high pressure side. In fact, I could probably use these T junctions on the low pressure collection side. But why? My ultimate RO is awesome and this is my machine and I built it to please me and all the customers I talked to before building it. And I am super proud of it. So saving a few bucks during assembly is not the place that I'm going to cheap out on. And the cheap fixed wastewater restrictor they use is not the only nonsense my competition came up with. Check out this water pressure gauge. What the fuck would you ever use this for on an RO in a home garden? Have you ever in the history of your house asked what the water pressure was? 
And for sure, why the fuck would you ever pay for it? It's like checking the fuel pressure in your car while you're driving. To what point? If it's driving, you know it's working. So what do you care about the pressure? Besides, if, some, if something suddenly happened to the water pressure or the membrane gets clogged to the point where the clean water flow decreases so much that you notice, what's the gauge going to tell you? Because if there's no water pressure, everything stops. And that means you should probably service your RO and replace the filters and the membrane. But more importantly, what does the pressure even matter to you since they don't include the wastewater throttle valve so you can adjust the wastewater to match the clean water ratio? Literally, the only information the pressure gauge will ever give you is that the pressure at your hose or faucet is too low, which is exactly why you need the throttle valve because you could adjust the wastewater to match the clean water. And there would be no way for you to create the back pressure necessary to make your RO work with low pressure and a fixed restrictor like my competition uses. No wonder all the other ROs cost 30% more and have higher wastewater numbers than my ultimate ROs. They sell you stuff you don't need or want or will ever use. And all that shit adds to the cost. In fact, I remember years ago when one of the RO Science Corporations decided to enter the marijuana market. They sent a guy to my store to talk to me about advertising back in the first edition of my grow book. And he wanted to know what the market wanted. So I told him, the least expensive, least complicated machine that made the least wastewater possible for the most clean water. Simple, right? It's an RO. That's all it's supposed to do. Maybe as a bonus, it would be nice if it didn't continue to produce wastewater when the float rises and shuts the clean water off. You know, just do that. Just make that look good and make it inexpensive. So, so you know what they did, right? They completely ignored me and decided to compete against the established brands directly and at full retail cost with a machine that's got a fixed restrictor valve and a pressure gauge and with those cheaper tees. And when that wasn't enough, they invented the flush kit. So not only did, the exact, did they do the exact opposite of what I suggested, I think that they were actually the ones that invented this, the $39 flush kit. Possibly the dumbest, most genius thing ever invented for ROs. Because the theory goes, if the membrane works by trapping the salts from the water, as it flows through it, then shouldn't running the water backwards flush it right out? And I remember that tr them trying that same strategy in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, right? And we all remember how that turned out for Cameron and the Ferrari, right? Now, I don't include a flush kit disaster because it turns out that the membranes are disposable and super cheap. And again, because I don't have to include the cost of the nonsense items and the price of my RO. Can you see how even with the additional costs of a throttle valve like this and more expensive Ys instead of Ts like these, I can still sell my RO for up to 30% less. And that's because this is all the RO the indoor gardener truly needs. But whatever, that's what big corporations do, and that's why my Ultimate RO sells so well. Because once you're educated on the difference between them and how I set mine up, why would you ever waste the money? Or contribute to their corporate shenanigans again when you can get a better RO, my RO, for less money. In fact, you can literally buy the Ultimate RO for just a little more than rebuilding and theirs and replacing the membranes. Before we go on, I just want to say one more thing about the flush kit. The truth is, I wish I would have thought of it. It's a brilliant marketing product. $39 for a $5 thing that fixes a $59 thing that you're going to have to replace anyway. It's fucking genius. And I wish I would have thought of it because I probably would have tried to sell you this nonsense too. 
instead of educating you on it. Know what I mean? And here's how these things claim to work. After turning off the water, you replace all the tubing on your RO with these tubes. And then when you turn the water back on, the flow is reversed and that drives the salts back out the way they came in and down and through the cap and your drain. But then you gotta ask yourself, why do you buy new air filters for your house and car? Why don't you just hang them out the window when you're driving? Because maybe that doesn't, what? Before we get into troubleshooting, I wanna take a closer look at the membrane housing. And let's start by identifying the parts. There's a cap and it has two O-rings in it. And there's a supply fitting in the end. And this has two fittings at the other end too. The center, further back fitting, is where the clean blue water comes out. And the lower, further back fitting, is where the waste water comes out. Oh, and that's the black tubing. And of course, when we combine them into the 200 and 300 gallon per day machines, all we're really doing is separating the supply water into both housings on this side and collecting and combining the clean and waste water from the other side. See what I mean? Now, let me show you how to remove the tubing. And when you look closely at these fittings, you can see there's a ring or a collar built into them. So this is sort of like one of those finger things you played with as a kid. I don't know the politically correct name, but you know the thing I'm talking about, right? You would have to smush your fingers together so you could slowly and carefully extricate them. But the trick was to push both ends together. And you're going to have to do that here too. So push both ends together. And while pushing together, push down and hold that collar in place with a finger. while pulling out the tube just like that. Push together like the Chinese finger torture toy. Oh shit, I said it. I was trying so hard not to. Anyway, push together, hold the collar tubing and pull out. And putting them together is just the opposite. Just make sure you really sink it in there and give it a little tug too. Also, You've heard, you've heard me say it before. Don't fire up a new RO system and just walk away no matter which one you buy. Always stick around for a few minutes and watch that there are no leaks coming out the fittings, whether it be on the high pressure side or the low pressure side. Now, if you're going to replace the membrane, first, don't try to do it in a tight spot or you're going to break one of the fittings. So make sure there's enough room to work. Next, make sure you remove the supply tube going to the cap first, push together, hold collar, pull tube out. Then securely grab the housing and cap and twist. But whatever you do, don't put pressure on the fittings or you'll snap one off just like this. And I'll show you how to fix that in a minute. But for now, we remove the cap and there is the membrane. Now, you're probably going to need a pair of pliers to grab it and pull it out. But once it's out, the new one should just drop right in. Push it in to make sure it's firmly seated. And now, before you begin assembling it again, make sure there are two O-rings. One, two. And that the smaller one is on the tube and the bigger one is seated in the cap way down there at the bottom. Actually stop and confirm that there are two O-rings there. Like literally point and say, O-ring, O-ring. Because if you nick one of these O-rings during the assembly, your RO will not seal until you replace it. So be super careful. And this only need be hand tight. Snugly, but only hand tight is required. That's why there's no wrench for the membrane housing. And now that you know how to replace the membrane, replacing the filters is even easier. Just lay the RO down face up. Stand to the left of it, put the filter wrench on the side so there's a little bit of play between your hand and the table and push slowly or impact lightly and with increased effort until the filter housing breaks loose. Being careful not to smash your hand. And if you notice, I did this one first 
And that's because I smashed my knuckles into it five minutes ago trying to take this one off first. So, no rushing. Loosen the carbon filter, which comes second first. And while there's no water in this filter, yours will probably be full. So remember to do this in an area that can get wet. And now that you know that, and now that you know how easy all this is, can you see why I laugh when you guys tell me about flushing your membrane or paying for features like a pressure gauge? And now let's look a little more closely at the post RO mineralizer and what it does and how it does it. And the first thing to notice is that it's smaller than the membrane housing it's attached to and that there are only two tubes in this an in and an out and where the first filter takes out the sediment and the second the chlorine and the smell and the bad taste and where the membrane that's the one on top takes out the salt this post RO mineralizer is more like the opposite of all that because it actually adds stuff back into the water it adds calcium and magnesium and yes you are correct those are some of the exact ions you just paid the ultimate RO to remove but it's funny because the supply water the problem with the supply water is not just about total PPMs it's also about the fact that you have no idea what the fuck else is in there could be calcium could be magnesium sure could be a lot of things but there could also be lead and arsenic and other heavy metals in there too. And even though the toxins and poisons don't necessarily add to the total PPM count, there are definitely drugs in the water like antibiotics and antidepressants and antihypertensive medications and more in there. Which was my point, yes, you are paying to remove the stuff here you are about to add back in here because the idea is that you have to remove everything so you know what you're starting off with so you know you're starting off with a clean slate and then from there you can transform the water into whatever nutrient cocktail you want okay this is the troubleshooting part of the video and at this point if you understand everything so far this part should put it all together for you and i want to start right now with the fact that there is absolutely nothing you're going to need a pressure gauge for there are only a couple of tubes and filters to this and once you understand what they do and where they go there is no problem that a pressure gauge is going to help you with or give you the information you need to know to make a decision. Trust me, I'm the guy who built the ultimate RO, and I'm the guy that has to answer the questions about my system when you call, which is exactly why I'm making this video, and especially this troubleshooting section, because I sell so many ROs now that I can't keep up with the questions anymore. And they're usually because you don't understand something, and not because something was wrong with the machine. So, I started taking notes and put this video together and it should answer any and all the questions you have about the setups. Anyway, let's see how I do. Since there are only a couple of things that can actually go wrong with an RO machine, the fixes are easy once you understand what's what. And the first problem is usually the clean water and the wastewater are at the same PPM. And if you bought my Ultimate RO, and are having that problem where the clean and wastewater are at the same P are at the same ppm i was probably high when i assembled it and either forgot to put in the membranes or i fucked up and combined the wastewater tube from one housing with the clean water tubing from the other housing like this now i changed the colors on the tubing so what's wrong with this setup would be obvious to you but you can see how one end from this y goes to clean water and the other end goes to the wastewater and the same thing with the other Y branch. They go to the wrong ports and it should actually look more like this one where the blue tubes are both going to the same middle ports on both housings and the black tubes are both going to the same outside ports on both housings. And if I did cross the tubes, 
when I was uh, assembling the RRO, I was probably higher when I did it. So just call the start and I'll fix that for you. And because no membrane or cross tubes are the only way the clean water and the wastewater can be at the same PPM, because if your clean water is high in PPMs and your wastewater is almost zero, well, that means I accidentally connected the black wastewater tubing to the clean water port on the membrane housing and the blue clean water tubing to the waste port. And that would look like this instead of like this. And if, it, if I did that, I'm sorry, I was probably high when I assembled your RO. And if you call the store, we can fix that too. Now, a 100 GPD machine like this should put out about 100 gallons per day, right? And at 24 hours in a day, your 100 gallon per day Ultimate RO should be putting out about 4 gallons per hour, or about 1 gallon every 15 minutes. So if you're not getting that volume, but the PPMs of the clean water are low and the wastewater are high, there are only two reasons for low volume. Either you were high and need to re-verify that the clean water and wastewater production are still about one to one, and let's hope the throttle valve got bumped or moved during shipping, because if adjusting the throttle valve doesn't fix the problem, there's a restriction and you're gonna have to find that. And that's because some of the older RO machines use restrictors with bearings in the fittings, and sometimes they break and the pieces move upstream and clog your machine. And there is no cost-effective way to fix that other than buying a new RO. But if you do buy a new machine, at least you know you're getting new membranes too. That'll save you some hassle. Now, if you want to find a restriction, first, you would turn off the water, the supply water, to the RO. And then you would disconnect the supply from the housing just past the carbon filter, thereby isolating the top half from the bottom. And that narrows our search for the cause by half. Turn the water supply back on, and if you have high pressure water gushing from here, the restriction is in the membrane portion of the RO, which is the most likely scenario. But if you're getting anything less than gushing water from this line, the restriction is in the filter portion which is highly unlikely. And the only thing you could do at that point is to unscrew the housings, remove both filters, reassemble, and check again without any filters in there. And if that works, congrats. Replace your filters with new ones. And if not, and there is actually water coming out of the hose to the RO, you're gonna have to buy a new RO because there's no cost-effective ways to fix the filter housings. So you're just gonna to have to buy a new one. Now, if there is high pressure water coming out of this tube here, you'll need to test the membrane housing next. And to do that, you reconnect this tube securely, and then we're going to take out the membrane supply tube, and you're gonna to have to take out the membrane. And all the tubing and whatever other contraptions are on top of your membrane housing. And you're gonna to have to remove the membrane reassemble the housing and rig a little something like this so you can check the water through the housings and if all that works and the housing flows then all you have to do is replace the membrane because that was most likely clogging it and you should be good but if you take it all apart and set it up like this and no water is coming out you're going to need to replace the housing because something is clogging it and there's no way to fix that. And again, at that point, you're probably just buying a new RO that comes with new membranes. Okay, now let's say you broke one of these fittings when changing the membrane housing, even though I warned you to be careful. Or maybe it broke when our shipper dropped it. However it happened, don't care. In almost all cases, there will be a thick side and a thin side left to the piece trapped in the cap. And if you're careful, you can take a knife like this and push the sharp side of the blade into the thick part of the fitting and then twist it out by using the bottom edge of the knife for leverage, like a screwdriver. Just get a good bite with the sharp, sharp part of the blade and they always come out. Okay, 
let's say you're rebuilding or upgrading your RO so it works better for you. And maybe you bent or kinked a tube and now you have to make a cut. Well, there are a couple of things you need to know about cutting polytubing like this, especially if you don't have one of these snips. Because look at the difference in cuts between these snips which make a very smooth slice and cut at an angle with very little compression. So they don't crush the tubing like scissors or a knife does. And this is important to the flow of the water. Just look at the difference in the ends between the cuts. That's why if you can't cut your tubing with snips like these, at least take a pen or something and round out the tubing again. That way, you have the least chance at a leak and the best chance for maximum water flow. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is shipping. Okay, when it comes to shipping, the first thing I want to say is we don't ship to Alaska or Hawaii or out of the country because it's too expensive for us. But a lot of you do worry about how the Ultimate RO ships because you don't want anybody to know what you're doing. And I can completely respect that. So. I saved you a few more dollars on the cost of the RO by using plain packaging like this. And where you probably wouldn't think of it, a box with graphics like this costs like $3 each. And that's if I buy them a thousand at a time. So if you buy the 100 or the 150 RO, we build it and ship it like this in a plain white box. And if you buy the bigger 200 or 300, we build it and ship it in this plain brown box. Okay, you know we ship discreetly, but what if you need even more discreetness? What if not only do you need top secret shipping, but you also need a distraction, so there is no way they would even guess that you're growing? What then, huh? That's why I created our new top secret deluxe disguise shipping package, where not only do we ship discreetly in a plain white or a plain brown box, we offer a distraction. Check this out. Don't want anybody to know you're growing? Just add the words, extra, super, discreet, disguise shipping in the subject line with your order. And we'll draw dicks and boobs like these all over one side of the box and write big dick blow up doll on the other. That way, nobody will suspect that this is an RO or that you're growing. Clever, right? And as a limited time only offer, if you order the Ultimate RO right now, while you're watching this video, we'll throw in Super Deluxe Top Secret Disguise Shipping at no extra charge because your concerns are my concerns. <laughs> okay, so maybe I was kidding on that last part. But dude, this is what we do here at the store. We literally sit here and get high and make videos and draw dicks on boobs on things. So I just want you guys to know, for as much as I complain and bitch about the customers and their dumb questions, I do love the job. I like that my videos help you guys do better. I like that I get to stir the pot and inject a little bit of reality and humor into an otherwise absurd situation. I like the hydro store business. I like the gangsters I meet. I like making deals with the vendors because in the end, I get to sit here and get high and draw dicks and boobs on things and make these videos. So don't hate. I'm the Grow Boss, and if you want to buy my books, or my Ultimate RO, or my 3-in-1 Megameter, you can find all that on my website, thegrowboss.com. And if you have any questions, click on the consult link, or order yourself the complete package with the consult, and I will help you get your garden back on track. And if you haven't started growing yet, I'll help you buy the right equipment the first time. Thanks for watching. I'm the Grow Boss.